Hey everybody, Mungo Dark Matter here, and today I thought I'd do a tutorial on how to use uh, Native Instruments Battery 4 in FL Studio 20. Alright, so let's get started right here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the channel rack and add Battery 4 to that. Takes a second for it to load. Now uh, let me click over here and detach this so we can bring it to the front. So here's the battery uh, plug-in right here. We're um, basically going to sh show how to use it within FL Studio. So in this video, I'm not going to get into some of the features of battery because there's a lot that you can do. You can customize drum kits in here. You can even customize each sound for the drum kit. But to start off, we're just going to go to drums right here. And I'm going to pick an acoustic drum kit just for the example. And I'm going to use a Session LE kit. You can use any kit you want. And uh, let me bring up the uh, piano roll right here. Now you'll see that there are these uh, different rows up here. Uh, each of these rows um, has like basically a, a set, a different set of the, the same kit, basically. So you've got your kick, your snare, your hi-hats and everything on each row. And so the first column is is all kicks. Uh, second column, uh, well, that, that's kind of mixed up. But the third column is all snares. And then down here you have columns with hi-hats. These can vary depending on... Um, the kit that you have and you can move things around to wherever you want but in general uh, the columns stay fairly consistent and uh, the rows are almost like a complete set that you would use um, so we're going to use the first row on here row a right here now this maps to the keyboard so uh, the first uh, column of each row is a c so like c3 is um, you can see up here the kick will light up up here when I hit C3 and so if you have your piano roll and uh, battery so you can see both of them you can you can kind of test to see where they're hitting if you want to or you can just do it by sound uh, so this is C3 the next one would be C4 the next one in that column and uh, and so on and uh, if we go C3 and go, we can go right down the row by just going down the keys. Uh, it includes the white and the black keys, so it's in order of the keys, all of the keys. So the, 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 the ones that we want to use is the kick, which is C3 right here, and then the next to it, which is the snare. And then we want uh, to use uh, this open hi-hat over here, which is this key right here. Let me bring this up a little bit. So I'm going to just program this real quickly. And so I'm going to use the uh, kick here on the first and the third beat. And then I'm going to use the snare, which is this one right here on the second and the fourth. Just a very basic pattern to show how this works. And so if I if I go to pattern in FL Studio and play this, you can hear we have just a very basic pattern. I'm gonna add in the uh, hi-hat up here, which is this right here. So I'm gonna put this every other um, note right there. So now when I play the pattern Alright, so that's basically how you you um, get the, your patterns in and each one of the grid in, in uh, battery maps back to a key on your keyboard um, as I've showed you. So you can make very complex patterns on this. You can use as many of these different um, uh, sounds or uh, drums as you want. Uh, now the problem here 
right now, and I'm going to show you how to solve the problem, is if we bring the, the, the channel rack up, you can see here, battery, it, all of this is on this basically the same track. If you look up here with the, the FL Studio drums, you have a kick, a clap, a hat, and a snare, and they're all on separate channels up here. And this is just the basic setup uh, when you set up the, the default template uh, in FL Studio. These come up. I did not put these here. Uh, this is the one we did add in here, and this is the one we want to use. But it would be nice to split up off in channels like that. The reason being is if we want the kick louder than the snare or vice versa, we can adjust that using a mixer. So um, there's a couple of ways you can you ha can handle that, depending. So if we go back into battery here, if we click on this arrow right up here next to this magnifying glass and we go to edit and we go to preferences and we click on engine, you see right here audio outputs, it says stereo. This is actually 16 stereo channels that you have by default. That's probably all you're going to need unless you're doing something really complex. So I'd recommend just leaving this on the default, but I'm just showing you just in case. You can go to custom and you can uh, reduce the number of stereo channels and we'll, and we'll split those into mono channels. So you can have up to 16 stereo channels or up to 32 mono channels if you use custom. But we're going to just use the default. So let's close that. So uh, what we want to do is we want to go back here uh, to the uh, first kick right here and we right click on this and we go output. Now there are two different ways we can do this. First off we could set this to bus 1 and go to the, our snare and go to output and set it to bus 2. Go to our hi-hat and set it to bus 3. And uh, if we go back here to this master tab at the bottom of battery You'll see we have a bus one, a bus two, a bus three, and a bus four here, and a master. And so if we turn our pattern on, we can actually raise these up and down. Accordingly. But this only gives us four buses, and if we have like, if we have more than four um, drums that we're using, we'd have to pair up some of them on these buses. But that is one way you could do it. Uh, the problem with this is you have to go back into battery to adjust your kit back and forth. So it's much easier if we route it through the FL Studio mixer. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. So if I go back to the main right here and I go to kick and I go to output and go direct out, I'm going to put this you can see these are my 16 stereo channels. I'm going to put this on the first one. I'm going to put the snare on the second one, which is three and four. And I'm going to put the hi-hat on to uh, the third one, which is five and six. Uh, so now these, now we can use these to route them out to FL Studio. But the next thing we actually need to do is we need to... Um, go up here to this gear and then to this gear and this plug and then we're going to click on processing and you see here are our channels right here uh, so I've already got the first four channels of the mixer currently used up here so I'm going to set each one of these channels to uh, like five six and seven because those are open right now you can use any channel on the mixer you want depending on what other instruments you have so we're going to set this to 5, we're going to set this to 6, and we're going to set this to 7. And we're going to close this, and let me uh, bring back the uh, mixer right here. And you can see, if I click on this now, you can see that I now have each of these things or each of these drums on a separate track and I can I can adjust them as I want I can bring them up or down any one of them so they're now on separate tracks on my regular mixer I could also take these separate tra tracks 
and route them however I want. Like for instance, I could create a bus in um, FL Studio in the mixer and route all three into that bus so that I have one master control for the drums and then I can adjust each separate one. Uh, and you can do that depending on um, how complex your project is, how many instruments in it. A lot of people like to put buses where main groups of instruments are and then they have just like the separate channels within that bus that they adjust separately. All right, so that's how you use Battery 4 in FL Studio 20. I'm Mungo Dark Matter, and whatever you do, enjoy the day, and I'll see you soon. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.